Hello tipsters and tricksters, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vintage Tips and Tricks video. What have you got if you haven't got, haven't got love? As much as I love doing style and beauty videos for my YouTube channel and I know you guys respond really well to those, I am starting to get a bit bored with it after like four years or however long I've been doing it for. So I would like to branch out and I put a little poll on both my YouTube and my Instagram asking you guys if you would be interested in videos about upcycling thrifted finds into vintage decor and I got a very, very resounding yes. So that is what we're going to do today. This is the first of those videos. When we first moved into our apartment, we didn't realize it wasn't furnished to the degree of all our previous apartments. So all it had was this table, a couch and a bed. Whereas our previous apartments came with everything, including all of our glassware and dishes and like everything you could possibly need when you move into a place. So we very quickly, like the day we moved in, had to go and buy stuff, which meant I couldn't buy what I wanted to buy for our house and for our decor. So we ended up with these very like standard, very cheap wine glasses and tumblers. I am absolutely obsessed with atomic glassware, like probably many of us are, but if you're in America, maybe this is something that you can source quite easily and cheaply. However, here in the UK, atomic glassware is quite expensive and hard to come by and shipping it from the US is not really an option because the shipping far exceeds the value and the cost of the items itself. So I decided to try making my own atomic glassware. This was my first attempt, coming nice and close for you guys so you can see. I'm actually quite pleased with it. It's a little bit hard to see because of the lighting. I will do a little zoom in as well. But I was quite pleased with the outcome. It's not like the paint you can see as like a dippled effect, which I think is inevitable when you're working with a handcrafted item. It's always going to look hand painted. But I think considering that, it turned out really, really well. There's a bunch of different designs and I'm gonna try like one authentic design which I will put on my tumblers and the design that I started with on the wine glasses was actually based on a hand painted vase that I found on Etsy. It's not kind of the traditional style for glassware but I really liked it and I felt like it was quite unique and I wanted to have like a unique set of wine glasses. So that's why I went for that. But let's also try the kind of more standard design that I have seen on some actual tumblers uh, on my tumblers and see how they go. So if you want to craft along with me, you will need some sketch paper to try out your designs first. And also if you aren't confident freehanding the designs, you can use this paper to make little stencils, which you can cut out with a blade or a scalpel or cut out with scissors if you only have that option, but the scalpel makes it like really nice and neat. And then you can gently take them down to the glassware and then work with stencils as well. I might even do that with the tumblers, I think, just because I'll be doing circles and the glass is curved, so it's like quite difficult to keep that kind of perfect. Whereas the design I'm doing on the wine glasses is a little bit more kind of free anyway, so I'm not too worried about it looking absolutely perfect. You'll also need to get the markers. The ones I've got are the Inmua acrylic paint pens. I got this set of 16 and they are fine tipped. Other than that, an eraser and a pencil comes in handy, which I have here. And of course, a cup of tea. Mm. The first thing you wanna do is make sure the glasses are really clean so you've got a nice clean surface to work with. And then go through and make sure that all your pens are working. You can of course use normal acrylic paint. You don't have to use pens. I just thought that it would be a really accurate way of doing this, particularly as the glass is round and slippery. So I chose to go with the pens. Then I just started straight in on the glass. As you know, I'd already tried this on another glass, so I was pretty confident about how I was gonna go about it. But you can totally use stencils or perhaps try on something that you don't mind messing up a little bit. You can remove this during this process because it is acrylic paint. So if you mess up while you're putting your design on, you can just get rid of it and start again. Just make sure you do that before you bake it. A few tips along the way, try and kind of be steady handed and smooth and when you color in, color it in in one go because I found anywhere that I went over the paint flaked off really, really quickly and everything that I did in a single layer, although it didn't look that great before baking, looked much better afterwards and it has stood the test of time. 
The trickiest part is these fine details with single lines. I struggled with these black lines quite a lot. They turned out okay, but they are a little bit wobbly. So perhaps stencils is a good way to go, but as I said, I don't mind it having that free-handed artistic kind of look about it. I also added a little silver kind of stars all over the glass to give it that atomic look. And it turned out pretty cute, I think. I was really happy with it. I then decided to put little lines on the bottom of the glass. I don't know how I feel about this in the long run, but I did it, so. <laughs> so I did black, and I think I put eight of them on, and then I went in between with silver, and I also put like little ones in between as well. I just kind of ran with creative license and just went for it instead of kind of sticking to too much of a plan, which is kind of how I approach everything artistic. And I always seem to like it. Like it's not about being perfect, it's about having fun, isn't it? And I think I really achieved that with this. I really enjoyed this activity and I did spend several hours on it, even though to you guys, it probably looks like I spent like 10 minutes making them. Now I'm going on to the tumblers. I picked this design here, which is based on a set of glasses I found online. I decided to go freehand after all, instead of doing a stencil because I'm lazy <laughs> more than anything. Uh, and I was pretty confident having just done the other design that I could probably make a circle happen despite the fact that the glass is rounded. So I just gave it a go and it turned out pretty well. It's here that things went a little bit awry. I did decide to try and go over the orange and make the layer a bit thicker. And these glasses have flaked so much. There's one that I didn't do that to and that's been fine, but the other two have flaked tons. And in comparison, the wine glasses, which I didn't do that to at all, have no flaking at all on them. So again, just to make sure you get the point, do not layer up on the paint. I also decided to put these little gold circles, which I really liked on there, but the brown lines, which were in the original design, I think just, it just looked too hand done and messy. So I did actually end up taking that off, which I liked a lot better. And I thought these turned out really, really cute. I still like the wine glasses better. I think they have more of an artistic look to them um, and they're a little bit more original, but these were fun and cute. So here's where I corrected the error of putting the brown lines on there. I mean, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but in real life it looked really shabby. So I took them off. You can do it with water, but I did find it came off much more easily and precisely with a little bit of nail polish remover. I really wanted to be able to use water, but I just found I had to do so much rubbing that I was destroying the designs around it. So it was much easier just to use the nail polish remover. and finito. Then I pop them all on a tray. You've got to start with the oven completely cold. Do not put your glassware into a hot oven. It will crack and explode. So you pop the items in the oven cold and then you set it for 160 degrees and you bake it for about 30 to 40 minutes. I think I put it on for 40 minutes in total. And here is the final result. You can see that it does come out a little bit darker and much more even once it's been in the oven. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. Obviously it's hand painted, so it's never going to look exactly like the real thing. And you will always know looking at it that it is handmade. I kind of like that. It makes it very unique and special and makes it just yours. Plus it was a really fun activity to do of an afternoon. And it was quite relaxing because I had to kind of do sections and then take little breaks and let things dry, which meant that it was quite calming actually. I really enjoyed it. And most of my projects aren't particularly calm, particularly for YouTube. So. I, yeah, I really, really liked that. I hope you guys liked it too. I would love to see any of the projects that you do um, based on this one. So if you do make your own 
atomic inspired glassware please do use my hashtag vintage tips and tricks on instagram i would love to see them and uh, any that i see i will share in my stories of course as long as you guys are comfortable with that if you guys like this kind of upcycling of thrifted and cheap items into kind of vintage inspired decor it is something that i would really like to branch into further and it is a concept that will be patron supported so if it is something that you would like to contribute towards helping me make more of do check out my patron link any help is greatly appreciated so that's the video guys i hope you liked it if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought of the video and any suggestions you have for future videos maybe share the video with someone that you think might like it and i will see you in the next video bye